We are gathered here today to bear witness to the unheralded positive effects of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition and to testify as much as we can, as often as we can, as to the unbelievable failures of conventional medicine. Like the fella said, from the proper perspective, everything makes sense. Benjamin Rush, one of the founders of the Declaration of Independence, one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence, would be spinning in his grave today if he saw what was going on with the delivery and the politics of medicine in the not-so-free 21st century. Here's what Dr. Benjamin Rush said over 200 years ago. Unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize itself into a dictatorship to restrict the art of healing to one class of men or women and deny equal privileges to others will constitute the Bastille of medical science and that is exactly what has happened and this is exactly why we are in the pickle that we are in. We do not have a free medical market. We do not. We don't have a free medical market in the US. We don't have a free medical market in Mexico, Canada, the European Union, Australia, Asia, or New Zealand. We have been existing in a society which has been monopolized by one type of medicine for over a hundred years. And because this has been such a cultural conditioning, such a socialization, we don't know what we don't know, and we don't know that there are other ways. We have been socialized to believe that the medical doctors own medicine and everybody else is a back of the bus quack with bad training. It's a lie. In point of fact, your medical doctor does not own medicine. Nobody does. Medicine is a vast domain. Your medical doctor is trained in one piece of the pie of medical science. There are many pieces of the pie. Chiropractic medicine, homeopathic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, naturopathic medicine, what myself and Dr. Wallach are trained in, and hundreds of others. But you and everybody else in, this, in the developed worlds in this, in this world, the developed countries in this world, have been socialized to believe that the only people that practice medicine are the MDs. And that the MDs hold the secret decoder ring to all things medical. It is not true. In point of fact, it's not even that difficult to understand. Medicine is a lot like dogs. There's a lot of different types of dogs. There's a lot of different types of medicine. Different dogs for different jobs. Bloodhounds are good for finding lost children in the wilderness. Labrador retrievers, right? They're good for duck hunting, good for pheasant hunting. Chihuahuas. I have no idea what they're good for. But I can guarantee you, if you take a chihuahua duck hunting, you're coming back empty-handed. That's the wrong dog for the hunt. It's the same with medicine. We need the right type of medicine for the right type of physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual condition. But the only type of medicine that we know, the only medicine practiced in our hospitals, the only medicine our insurance pays for, the only medicine that they make TV shows about, is MD-directed medicine. Now look, this is not a naturopathic doctors are great and MDs are evil. This is perspective. Different dogs for different jobs, right? The medical doctors are trained in a particular type of medicine called allopathic medicine. 
I practice naturopathic medicine, chiropractic medicine, osteopathic medicine, etc. Medical doctors are not trained in medicine, they're trained in allopathism. It is reductionistic in its philosophical, scientific underpinnings. Reductionism argues if it can't be measured, it does not exist. So since nobody has ever dissected the soul out of a body, since nobody has ever seen the soul with a CT, an MRI, or a CAT scan, doesn't exist. To the medical doctor trained in allopathic reductionism, consciousness itself is a function of biochemistry. And once you're dead, it's lights out, game over. There is no such thing as spirit. There is no such thing as soul. The body is a biochemical machine made of parts. Reductionism argues that the body is a machine. There is no soul. The body cannot heal itself. And interestingly enough, your medical doctor is not trained how to cure your disease. Because your medical doctor is brought up inside of a philosophy that does not believe that that is possible. And they're not doing so forth factors. The naturopaths, the homeopaths, the Ayurvedic practitioners, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, herbalism, everybody else in the world is trained in holism. And holism is a sophisticated and apt system of medical philosophy. Holism argues, look, the body is a system of interrelated parts. There is a soul. It's running the show. Your body is so smart, it had the ability to grow itself all by itself from a single cell into you. Now, if the body could do that, do you think it has the ability to fix itself? Well, holistic doctors say yes. Medical doctors say no. You can't cure the disease. You have to manage it. And this is the single biggest disconnect that we have all around the world. Most people are completely unaware that the prevailing doctors, the doctors on the top of the heap, the MDs, are not trained in how to cure disease. You don't know what you don't know. Medical doctors are trained to manage disease. And this is why, one of the reasons why, everybody is sick and getting sicker because the medical professionals that we pay hard-earned money every month in the form of medical insurance premiums, if you're in Canada, you don't have a choice, they take it right out of your paycheck, you have no option. The medical system that we have access to, that we give our hard-earned money to every month, the doctors do not believe that you can cure your illness. Which leads to an inevitable conclusion. Listen, you're welcome to your own opinion, but you're most certainly not welcome to your own set of facts. Facts are facts. Your medical doctor may be the nicest person that God ever created, but your medical doctor does not practice health care. If they did, you would be getting healthier. Your medical doctor practices disease management. And there's a big difference. Now, when I'm elected Surgeon General of the United States, it's going to be illegal for hospitals to say on the side of their building health care, because that's false advertising should be disease management. Oh, you'd think twice about that. 
But because we are in a monopoly, the wool gets pulled over our eyes easily. Now remember, this is about perspective. We need the right dog for the right hunt. Well, you know, the medical doctors are good at something, right? But what are they good at? Trauma care. That's the epitome of reductionism. I got a bullet in my arm, heaven forbid. I've got a broken bone, got a laceration, right? Surgery when it's necessary. Sometimes you need surgery. And to a lesser extent, infectious disease. This is the wheelhouse of the allopathically trained, reductionistically centered medical doctor. <clears throat> In a perfect world, it would be illegal for medical doctors to treat chronic disease because that's not their thing. I mean, we don't let chiropractors do open-heart surgery, right? Because that's not their thing. Well, in a perfect world, in an objective, scientifically authentic, true world, the medical doctors would not be allowed to touch chronic disease because while they have been treating chronic disease, we are dying. Our children are being born autistic, we're going bankrupt, and our life expectancies are getting shorter, not longer. Now look, my mantra that you need to understand. MD-directed medical treatments for chronic diseases do not work. They're the wrong dog for the hunt. They're the leading cause of bankruptcy and the leading cause of death. This is why I recommend people fire their medical doctors. Not because, you know, they're sadistic or I have an axe to grind, but because they're the wrong dog for the hunt. <laughs> Ai Chihuahua. <laughs> Prevailing doctors, the doctors on the top of the heap, the MDs, are not trained in how to cure disease. You don't know what you don't know. Medical doctors are trained to manage disease. And this is why, one of the reasons why everybody is sick and getting sicker because the medical professionals that we pay hard-earned money every month in the form of medical insurance premiums, if you're in Canada, you don't have a choice, they take it right out of your paycheck, you have no option. The medical system that we have access to, that we give our hard-earned money to every month, the doctors do not believe that you can cure your illness. Which leads to an inevitable conclusion. Listen, you're welcome to your own opinion, but you're most certainly not welcome to your own set of facts. Facts are facts. Your medical doctor may be the nicest person that God ever created, but your medical doctor does not practice health care. If they did, you'd be getting healthier. Your medical doctor practices disease management. And there's a big difference. Now, when I'm elected Surgeon General of the United States... It's going to be illegal for hospitals to say on the side of their building health care, because they, that's false advertising. Should be disease management. Oh, you think twice about that. But because we are in a monopoly, the wool gets pulled over our eyes easily. Now remember, this is about perspective. We need the right dog for the right hunt. Well, you know, the medical doctors are good at something, right? But what are they good at? Trauma care. That's the epitome of reductionism. I got a bullet in my arm, heaven forbid. I got a broken bone got a laceration, right? Surgery when it's necessary. Sometimes you need surgery. And to a lesser extent, infectious disease. This is the wheelhouse of the allopathically trained, reductionistically centered medical doctor. In a perfect world, it would be illegal for medical doctors to treat chronic disease. 
because that's not their thing. I mean, we don't let chiropractors do open heart surgery, right? Because that's not their thing. Well, in a perfect world, in an objective, scientifically authentic, true world, medical doctors would not be allowed to touch chronic disease because while they have been treating chronic disease, we are dying. Our children are being born autistic, we're going bankrupt, and our life expectancies are getting shorter, not longer. Now look, my mantra that you need to understand, MD-directed medical treatments for chronic diseases do not work. They're the wrong dog for the hunt. They're the leading cause of bankruptcy and the leading cause of death. This is why I recommend people fire their medical doctors, not because you know, they're sadistic or I have an axe to grind, but because they're the wrong dog for them. <laughs> I'm Chihuahua. Now there is a better way. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Look, not everybody got on Noah's Ark, right? More's the pity. People don't know what we know. And one of the reasons that I love Longevity so much is because Longevity's mission, Longevity's modus operandi, is to deliver to everyone who is wise enough to hear the simple message of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition for the masses based on holistic medicine. Longevity does this better than anybody I've seen, and I've been doing private practice, naturopathic primary care practice for 20 seven years I've been around the block. Longevity's formulations, Dr. Wallach's ideations, when you put those two together, it is an unbelievably effective system of holistic health care. So here's the deal. Right? In every walk of life, there are people who are just way better at what they do than their contemporaries. That's just life. Right? Da Vinci, the Mona Lisa, Einstein, in the sports arena, and Michael Jordan. Right? I mean, if your child wanted to learn how to play basketball, and you had the option of having your high school basketball coach train him, or Michael Jordan, you're going to go with Michael Jordan because he's way better at it. Well, it's no different in medicine, and it's certainly no different in holistic medicine. <laughs> and God is my witness, and I am here to testify before you today that Dr. Joel Wallach, the founder of Longevity, is the unheralded master of holistic medicine and nobody does it better. I mean, look, you know, I got pretty good results before I met Doc. It's hard not to get good results when you're simply providing the body with the stuff it needs to fix itself. It's not that tough of a job. But when I started working with Dr. Wallet, my head exploded <laughs> because I didn't think it could fix that. <laughs> Holy smokes, the things I've seen people recover from. While I've been using Dr. Wallet's uh, you know, methods and understanding of the longevity products, the results I've seen eclipse anything that I, uh, that I experienced previously. And there's a reason for this magnificence. 
There is a reason for this remarkable degree of success. And I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. But it's important to understand, especially because we're using this as a training tool, and especially because some people in the audience might be new, Dr. Wallach's resume is unmatched by not only any other naturopathic physician in the world, but by most medical doctors. Doctor, I could talk for two hours straight without taking a breath about Dr. Wallach's scientific accomplishments. It's unbelievable. He's also taken the Food and Drug Administration report. That's not a bad thing. Did you know that uh, Dr. Wallach and Young Debbie, without any public uh, opposing, behind the scenes, for your benefit, have taken the Food and Drug Administration report to secure something called a qualified health plan. And here's how that goes. In the United States of America, in Canada, in the European Union, in Australia, in New Zealand, in Southeast Asia, the only thing that can cure disease is a drug. The only thing that can cure disease is a drug. If you were to develop tomorrow a cancer cure made from buttercups, the Food and Drug Administration would make, would regulate that as a pharmaceutical agent and you would no longer be able to go out in the field and collect the buttercup medicine. It is stacked against everybody except the pharmaceutical industry. In order to bring a drug to marketplace, you have to spend 40, 50, 60 million dollars on FDA approval. Nutritional supplement companies do not have the amount of money to play in that arena. They have kept everybody else out of the health game by having unbelievable high entry points into the game. But there is something that you can do. If you collect enough published data, and the stars align, <laughs> you can bring that to the Food and Drug Administration, you can put it on their table, and you can say, we have 5,000 published articles that say what we want to say. And if, again, the stars align, the Food and Drug Administration will grant you something called a Qualified Health Plan. Here are the Qualified Health Plans Young Jerry has been involved with, and Dr. Wall. The trace mineral selenium is preventive for three different types of cancer. Prostate cancer, <clears throat> lung cancer, uh, and colon cancer. Essential omega-3 essential fatty acids reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, reduce the risk of thrombotic stroke, and the antioxidants in vitamin C and E are cancer preventive. By the way, the trace mineral selenium was just ordered by the Food and Drug Administration to be added to baby formula. Nobody else does that. This is the level of integrity that is going on behind the scenes that most longevity reps have no idea about whatsoever. And it is important because how somebody acts in their life, the steps that a person takes behind the scenes are often telling of their true character. Now look, Doc's been published 72 times. That's not bad. He's got over 40 years of clinical experience. He has the longest running health talk radio show in U.S. history, and at 75 years of age, he gives 300 free lectures a year. Greta Scott King was able to launch in the million man march because Dr. Wallach helped her fix her arthritic knees. Evander Holyfield was able to come back after a heart attack and win the heavyweight championship because Dr. Wallach fixed his heart. Nelson Mandela 
lived to be in his 90s and was pretty healthy because he was taking longevity supplements. Did you know that? Creflo Dollar's daughter was dying from asthma in the hospital. Unresponsive to conventional treatment, Creflo says, Doc, my daughter's dying, what do I do? Doc says, take these supplements, stop eating these photos. <laughs> Three weeks later, she's released from the hospital, and a month later, she's free of asthma. Wow. <laughs> We all know Theo Ratliff's story. Theo Ratliff was told by the best orthopedic surgeons in the NBA that he was done. His bones and joints were gone. Theo, you're in trouble, baby. You cannot play professional sports with this much problem. Theo calls Doc Gus. Doc, what do I do? Doc says, stop eating these foods, start eating these foods, thank you, something. He does. Nine months later, he comes back after the best orthopedic doctors in the world told him he was done. He came back and led the league in rebounds, not only for that year, but for the uh, two other years. <laughs> and he increased his bank account by a substantial amount <laughs> because he was able to continue to play in the NBA. And that's how Dr. Wallet works. Now, I know what you're thinking, and just want to put your minds to rest. You don't have to worry because Dr. Wallet's protocols work just as well on white people. There has to be stuff that lays the foundation. There has to be a solid foundation here, and this is it. This book, The Diseases of Exotic Animals, is in the Smithsonian Institution. Doc wrote it. it took 12 years, cost $25 million. Doc did 26,000 autopsies, 10 million blood chemistries and histopathologies. It's a pretty thick book. And this is old-fashioned, boots-on-the-ground research. This is not research that is corrupted or prejudiced by pharmaceutical money. This research literally wrote the book on our understanding of the relationship between nutrition and disease. Dr. Wallach wrote the book on medical nutrition. And this is what informs Dr. Wallach's therapeutics. This is what informs Yangevity's formulations. And this is why, in the wonderful world of holistic medicine, at least it's been my experience, that Dr. Wallach's protocols and Yangevity's products produce unbelievable, remarkable results, most of the time, way better than anything I've ever seen. And if there's one thing I want you to remember from this afternoon's presentation, here it is. $25 million of federally funded research proved that in order for the human body to thrive, in order for the human body to work the way that God and nature intended it, 90 essential nutrients are necessary. 16 minerals, 16 vitamins, 12 amino acids, 2 essential fatty acids. A nutrient is called essential if you need it, but you can't make it. Your body needs calcium, it can't make it. Your body needs vitamin C, it can't make it. Your body needs 90 nutrients, can't make them. This is why you have seen the slogan 90 for life. And that's what this refers to. 90 for life does not refer to coffee. It does not refer to jewelry. It does not refer to uh, scrapbooking. It does not refer to uh, rebound FX. It refers to the 90 essential nutrients that the human body needs in order to function properly. There are no products in Yongevity which are called the 90 for life product. 
This is a slogan which refers generally to this concept which is most important to understand. In order for your body to have a healthy heart, healthy lungs, healthy kidney, healthy brain, it needs stuff. It needs 90 nutrients. And if you do not have these 90 nutrients, it's only a matter of time until something starts to break. And by the way, we are not the only ones trumpeting this message. Linus Pauling, two-time Nobel Prize winner, said, and I quote, you can trace every sickness, every disease, and every ailment to a mineral deficiency. This is a big deal. And it is a much bigger deal than your medical doctor knows. It is a much bigger deal than your nutritionist knows. It is a much bigger deal than anybody knows. Once you have experienced the truth, you're in its velvet grasp forever, and you have a certain amount of responsibility that you need to tell people in your life the truth. Here's a sample of simple nutrient deficiency diseases. High blood pressure is often caused by not enough calcium and magnesium. Ring in the ears, not enough calcium. Vertigo, not enough calcium. Type 2 diabetes and multiple mineral deficiencies. Congestive heart failure, not enough vitamin B1. Asthma, not enough essential fatty acids. And obesity, not enough nutrients. And why doesn't Oprah know this? Oh. I don't know. You don't get fat because you're lazy. You don't get fat because you have a weak will. You don't get fat because you have a bad gene. You don't get fat because you have a voodoo curse. You gain weight because your body has run out of nutrients and it knows it's run out of nutrients. By the way, was there anybody in Auschwitz or Dachau or the death camps of World War II that was overweight? No! It didn't matter what your pre-existing health condition was. It didn't matter what your age, your race, or your sex was. If you don't eat, you lose weight. So, here's how many nutrients your body needs. Here's how many you have. Your body calls for nutrients. So your body makes you eat. So you go to Olive Garden, you eat a meal, 3,000 calories, you wolf it down. <laughs> you come back home, and three hours later, you're hungry again. Right? And it's not because you have a weak will, and it's not because you have a stomach, and by the way, your medical doctor's advice is, oh, you're overweight, just cut out your stomach. <laughs> and I was black, right? Yeah, okay, dog. I just got my stomach out. It's a good idea. <laughs> you're overweight because you're eating too many calories. You're eating too many calories because your body is nutritionally starved. Period. Which is why Weight Watchers and Jenny Craig don't produce consistent results because you can starve your body for long enough. You can go on a calorie restricted diet for about two, three months, and then your body is so nutritionally devoid, you wake up in the middle of the night, you run to the fridge, you eat three gallons of ice cream. It happens to everybody, and you gain all the weight back that you previously lost because you're missing one important data point. You are nutritionally starved, and you do not know that you're nutritionally starved. We go from this to this in 75 years. We have the genetic potential to live to 120. But we don't even get close to that. And it's not because of environmental pollution. It's not because of electromagnetic radiation, although these things have a factor. The biggest factor is unrecognized nutrient deficiencies, period. Oh, but Dr. Quinn, I can get all the nutrients I need from food. No, you can't. It's a myth, like the Easter Bunny. <laughs> I used to believe in the Easter Bunny until April 18, 1965. I come down at 5 o'clock in the morning and I see my mother with a carrot and a little brainer. We used to leave the 
gum and be all candy. I see my mother with the grater and I see a grocery bag filled with candy. Whoa! What are you doing with the Easter Bunny? It's candy! <laughs> Child of the Den, April 18th, 1965. You can't get all the nutrients you need from eating. It does not matter how good you are. It does, you could have a hundred acres of the most organic farmland on the planet Earth and only eat the stuff that you grow and you would still be nutrient deficient. It is impossible to get your nutrients from food. You can't do it, and here's why. 60 minerals, that's the lion's share. Two-thirds, 66% of your nutrients are minerals. Calcium, sulfur, zinc, selenium, etc. Only thing about minerals is the only person that can make a mineral is God. Yeah. <laughs> Plants cannot make minerals. Animals cannot make minerals. For goodness sakes, if a plant could make a mineral, we could bioengineer lettuce to make gold, we'd all be rich. Minerals are found in the water, they're found in the soil. If they're found in the water, it's because they wash there out of the soil. Remember selenium, the anti-cancer mineral? Well, here's a map of selenium deposits in the top soil of the United States. On this map, if it's red and pink, there's a ton of selenium. If it's yellow, less and less, blue, less and less, gray, less and less, and if it's white, there isn't any. So, if you're eating organically grown food, harvested by Trappist monks under a full moon, from here, you're good with selenium. But if you're eating organically grown vegetables, harvested by Trappist monks under the full of the moon, and they're grown here, 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 or a thousand other places, there isn't any selenium in it. None, nada, yet, zero. Oh, the Dr. Quinn, I didn't get all the selenium I need from Brazil nuts. No, you can't, you're an idiot. <laughs> Period. Autism, type 
type 2 diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, obesity. And remember what Linus Pauling said, you can trace every disease, every disease to a mineral deficiency. And this is what your medical doctor, your MD, your allopathic, reductionistically trained pharmaceutical centers medical doctor does not know. So your nutrient tank tanks. Your body starts to break. You go to these guys, and they give you a drug for your blood pressure, a drug for your asthma, a drug for your heartburn, a drug for your back pain, a drug for your migraine, a drug for your depression, a drug for your blood sugar, a drug for your epileptic seizures, and then two or three drugs to take care of the side effects of all those drugs. <laughs> By the time you're 60 years of age, you're hard of hearing, you can't see, you've got cataracts, you've had cervical surgery to your neck because of collapsed discs, you've got no gallbladder, you've had three fake knees, you got no teeth, you need a prescription medicine to pee, a prescription medicine not to pee. With golden years. Brought to you by bus driver MD. We didn't know any better. Look what happened. We got sick. We suffered. We died. Before we died, we went bankrupt. And then we died. And then our relatives were so grief stricken and so out of the loop that they organized a 5K run on our behalf. They raised $20,000 and they gave it to the medical doctor. That's Stockholm Syndrome, baby, you know what that is? When the people who are kidnapped develop feelings of a profession for the kidnappers, yeah, that's what's going on here. Now, a rational person, you know, a person with a brain, would just look at all of this and say, well, I get it. I get it. And the next logical question is, well, what do I do next? I thought you never asked. Dan, you can Yeah, 
Dr. Bab, Dr. Wallace, who I'm on the research, Richard Brennan and crew, and Steve Wallace and crew have put together the formulations based on Doc's recommendations. One healthy body start pack 2.0 and one bottle of plant derived minerals gives your body all 90 essential nutrients. Period. That's it. It's what you need to do. Everybody needs to do it. Everybody needs to take showers. Everybody needs to wear clothes when they go outside. Everybody needs to drink water. Everybody needs the 90 essential nutrients. Without exception. From conception to rape. And look, longevity has, has your back. They have all these different healthy packs that have been put together in order to support and promote different structures of the body while at the same time providing the foundation 90 essential nutrients that everybody needs, right? So holy smokes! We've got the anti-aging healthy pack, the blood sugar healthy pack, the digestion healthy pack, bone and joint healthy pack, weight loss healthy pack, brain and heart healthy pack, medical nutrition for the masses. The next step in human evolution is the longevity revolution. provided the basics and you've got those bases covered, Longevity has hundreds of other supplements that you can use to give a little extra heart support, give a little extra brain support, give a little extra whatever. For goodness sakes, we've got enzymes, niacin, EFA, de-stress, z radical an awesome supplement. Chocolate, healthy chocolate, that's right, it's chocolate and it's healthy! Yeah! But hands down, without exception. My favorite Nanchevi add-ons by the wide margin are the Good Herbs products. I don't know how much you know about the Good Herbs Company, but the Good Herbs Company makes the best herbs, herbal medicines in the United States. They do a better job than the company that I have access to as a physician. This stuff is remarkable in the world of herbal medicine, and this is a testament to young Jeffy's mission not to just give you anything, but to give you the best. Yeah. Because my people are destroyed. By that, no. And quite frankly, enough is enough. We are not get an amen. Give your body a chance. Give it the 90 essential nutrients through longevity, and you will not only see your own health improve, but you will see the health of your friends, your family members, your church members, and everybody improve. Because in the final analysis, you are the last best hope your family, friends, church members, and community members have to live long and healthy lives. All you have to do is learn how to point. Yes. Longevity is the way I am your steadfast advocate for health, Dr. Peter Glidden. Thank you for your time.